Yo, what up everyone? Uh, thank you so much for uh, checking out this video. Uh, I want to make a quick guide of uh, Mythic Plus for Protection Paladin. I have loved this class so much. Um, we're a few weeks into this season and I just hit Keystone Master. Uh, my goal is to kind of hit um, uh, Keystone Hero if I can, maybe the next couple weeks. I'm trying to get to Keystone Master with a couple other classes and probably make videos for them as well. But I wanted to give you guys kind of a rundown for the class itself. What talents I use, conduits, uh, legendaries, covenant, all of that, and kind of give you just a breakdown of what the weaknesses and strengths are for, for Protection Paladin. If you're not already playing it, but you're interested in playing it, I highly suggest it. It's my favorite tank, I think, right now. Uh, I have played Blood DK, have plenty of experience with Prot Warrior, well, years ago, but it's still a super fun class. Uh, I mained uh, Guardian Druid for Season 2, I think, of uh, Shadowlands. Just, I mean, I love tanking. It's so much fun, but Prop Paladin just feels really good right now. Uh, so anyways, let's just jump right into it. All right, so first couple things I wanted to cover were strengths and weaknesses for Protection Paladin. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of strengths for Protection Paladin. I think there's way more strengths than weaknesses. Um, a couple of those are great pug tank. You have tons of off healing. Um, you can help out your group if your heal is struggling, uh, your DPS are struggling, they're standing in stuff they're not supposed to, getting hit by stuff they're not supposed to. You got great survivability. Your interrupting is fantastic because if you guys didn't already know, Avenger Shield interrupts spell casting basically for the target that you're hitting. And also if you have Divine Toll, which you'll want to have because you'll probably be Kyrian. Um, which we'll talk about later, that interrupts everybody around you. So interrupts are fantastic. You have great damage. Uh, this really isn't a good example of my damage and interrupts that I've done overall. Interrupts have been able to pull, you know, 40, 50 plus interrupts on a dungeon, depending on the dungeon. Uh, and then damage, um, yeah, usually you can beat a lot of a lot of DPS, especially if they don't quite know what they're doing. When you get into hierarchies, you probably won't beat anybody, any of the DPS anyways. Um but uh, just, yeah, just great damage, great off healing, fantastic tank to um, pug. So basically, if you're tanking with people you don't know, this is a great tank for that, especially if you want to get Keystone Master, whether that's for the first, first time or you wanted to try Protection Paladin or, you know, you're just looking for tips because you like this class so much and you're getting a Mythic Plus, whatever. Great, I mean, super good tank uh, for that. Also, a couple affixes we're really good with are is Necrotic. Basically, Necrotic is um, if we get, um, every time we take damage, we take basically the stack, which reduces our healing overall. Once it gets to really high stacks, you basically can't heal yourself. The healer can't heal you. So you kind of want to drop those stacks. We have a few different things that help us with that. Consecrated Ground is one of them. Your Consecration is 15% larger. And enemies, enemies within it have 50% reduced movement speed, so you can kite away, drop those Necrotic stacks, push back in. Also, Final Stand. Uh, during Divine Shield, all targets within 15 yards are taunted. This is fantastic. It drops all your stacks. You keep aggro because normally when you pop Divine Shield, if you didn't already know, you drop all aggro and the enemies just go hit everybody else. Um, so yeah, those are really good. Also Bursting, um, we have tons of off healing for that. You know, uh, Word of Glory is literally fantastic for off healing groups, especially if you have this. Uh, Word of Glory's healing is increased by the target's missing health on any target. This is fantastic. Uh, lay on hands. You just have tons of stuff to help out your team. Um, so a lot of strengths. Uh, weaknesses, we, we don't have a lot of mobility. Really, we have Divine Steed. There's a conduit that increases how long this goes. So normally it isn't quite, I think it's five or six seconds right now. Usually it's not that. And it's on a 45 second cooldown. Uh, we have Cavalier, which you can get two charges. But most of the time when you're getting the higher keys... Uh, you're probably going to always want to take this. It's just not worth it. But if you're pushing lower keys or you have a great group, then, you know, I would do that. It just gives you mobility because we don't have a lot of it. Uh, and then another one is we're kind of squishing into pulls, the beginning of pulls, until we get Shield the Righteous up. Uh, this increases our armor by, uh, I mean, a lot uh, for four and a half seconds, um, which is really cool. But usually we start with Art and Defender to kind of get into those pulls, especially if you don't have this up, and if they're bigger, for sure. Uh, but mostly strengths. This is just a fantastic tank, especially for pugging and for, you know, getting KSM or um, Keystone Hero. You know, fantastic. All right. So for talents, um, I think I used these for a majority of pushing. You know, it's just been a few weeks, so I haven't really dealt with a lot of different affixes. Um, so, let, yeah, let's just go through them. I think these are going to be your main talents that you'll probably want to run. I, I think Holy Shield is 
always a mandatory talent. Your block chance increased by 20%. You're able to block spells and your successful blocks deal holy damage to your attacker. This is just a constant, um, basically, defense increase for you all the time. And, you know, to be able to block spells is just, I mean, <laughs> that's really good. Uh, first Avenger, always take this. Avenger's shield hits two additional targets. And grants you an absorb shield up for 100% of all damage it deals. Obviously, the shield is fantastic and you're dealing more damage. I think Blinding Light is really good um, just for... Uh, I think scenarios where you're having a lot of different enemies uh, basically casting and you can't interrupt everything, uh, even though you probably can get most of it with Divine Toll if that's up, or Avenger Shield, this is still just beneficial. It's just another CC, even just for a second. And off a minute and a half cooldown, that's not that bad. Uh, I never take this. I think some people take this. Um, it could be beneficial that you're dealing with less groups that you have to interrupt, possibly. Um, reduce our cooldown of Hammer of Justice. So, and that's pretty quick, you know. I, I think maybe you could take this in certain dungeons or scenarios. If you like it better, maybe. But try this out if you haven't already. Umbrigo Spirit, like I said, this one's fantastic. Cavalier is good for pushing lower stuff. I've never used this. I probably never will. Um, I think, you know, bot, blessing of protection off of a, someone in your party that's taking physical damage or anything like that is just so, so good. Not that this isn't good, but I think these other two are just better. Cavalier for lower dungeons, you're just trying to speed run through stuff, push dungeons if you know them really well. Unbreakable Spirit, though, this is like a must-have when you get into higher groups or you're not confident in your healer or your group in general. Uh, reduce the cooldown of your Divine Shield, Ardent Defender, and Lay on Hands. So Divine Shield, reduce your cooldown on that, your Lay of Hands right here, and Ardent Defender. So instead of a 2-minute cooldown, this is you know 1.4 minutes. Uh, that's just really good. You're using it all the time. Um, Divine Purpose. Uh, this, yes, I would use it all the time. Holy Power Abilities have a 15% chance to make your next Holy Power Ability free. Deals 20% increased damage and healing. Great for off healing, great for damage. Uh, this one kind of changes around, I think, depending on what you're doing. I think High Keys, 25 plus, people have ran all three of these. Um, at least looking in the logs right now. Uh, but I think I've seen this a lot. I've only used a, a little bit. I do think it's, I think it's a really good talent. Uh, I prefer Hand of the Protector. Um, this gives me more control over what targets I'm healing instead of just a base healing thing, which I think, I mean, not that this, this is really good, but this is just fantastic. I mean, I can, I've crit 80, 70, 80, 90 K one heals. So a target's about to die. I basically have a free lay on hands with this. I mean, that's just, that's phenomenal on certain weeks. Like I said, with certain affixes like necrotic, um, anything you're looking to kite, this is really good. Reduce movement speed, kind of get away, especially since you have less mobility, uh, Righteous Protector. This thing is freaking, it is so good. Each Holy Power spent reduces the remaining cooldown of, on Avenging Wrath and the Guardian of Ancient Kings by one second. We're spending, I mean, we're spending Holy Power all the time, especially for Shield of Righteous to keep that up all the time. Off healing, I mean, just back and forth. You're spending so much. You reduce your cooldown a lot. You know, it gives you more chances to get uh, uh, Avenging Wrath and your uh, Guardian of the Ancient Kings. So this is a huge cooldown. I mean, you can pull some big pulls. I mean, you have eight seconds, but it's just a, oh gosh, save me now. I made a mistake or it's, it's your own shit button. It's good. <laughs> um, and then, um, uh, obviously a vending graph for just more damage all the time. So this is the standard. This is what I run. Like I said, final stand though, really good for necrotic. I'd probably only use it there. I think maybe with bursting probably, but this is, I mean, I just, I prefer this, but this is, this is what I ran for most of what I did. Uh, just fan fantastic stuff for Mythic Plus. So, uh, yeah, next thing uh, is Covenant. Covenant is Kyrian. 100% going to be Kyrian. Uh, it's kind of our only choice. Um, I think some people are running uh, Vinthyr, but since we have Divine Toll, I mean, it's literally, it's just, it's snap aggro immediately. You do a ton of damage. Um, you interrupt everything around you. It's only on in a minute. I mean, it's a minute cooldown. That is fantastic. Um, uh, you just couldn't ask for something better. And also you've got the uh, steward. So like it gives you like basically this, uh, consumable, which restores 20% health and removes all diseases, poisons, curses, and bleeds affecting you. This is so good. Um, if you're already a protection paladin and you aren't using this as, um, as much as you should, you should, this has saved my life. This has saved the group's life. It saved polls. Um, it, I mean, it's just, it's fantastic. Uh, Kieran is definitely the way to go. Okay, for conduits, um, okay, so it's kind of embarrassing, but I mean, I was able to push the KSM, probably could push the Keystone Hero and farther um, with Pelagos, but 
you should 100% get uh, Mechanicos. He is so much better than anything else. I think the highest key we have for Pelagos that people have pushed into is probably, I think it's 24, 23, 24, maybe 25. And you can do another four or five plus that with Mechanicos. It's just so good. It's it's such a fantastic, he gives you so many benefits here. Um, kind of one of the big ones is Hammer of Genesis, damaging a new enemy grants you 3% haste for 10 seconds, up to five stacks. That's crazy. That's 15% haste increase for 10 seconds. Oh my gosh. Uh, a couple, you know, you get a defensive one, you get a more offensive one. You got this right here. Divine Toll releases a, a blast overcharge animal at your target's location, dealing extra damage split between everybody over eight seconds. Also reduces the cooldown of Divine Toll, which is your, you know, a humongous ability. It can go up to twenty seconds reduce. I mean, a reduced cooldown, I believe. So you should unlock this. I'm working to unlock this, especially since now I'm pushing a Keystone Hero. Uh, but uh, as far as conduits go, this is what I ran. Um, I think this is this one's pretty big. Guardian Ancient King's cooldown is reduced by 27 seconds. Casting a key, cause your next word of glory to cost of holy power. I think it's just really beneficial. Uh, Sheila Right Righteous extends our defender's duration by 20%, reduces its cooldown by 1.6 seconds. This is a must-have. My item my item level of this kind of it's so low. Like I said, I I mean I'm just getting into protection paladin. I love it, it's fantastic. Um so I don't have the best conduits for sure. Uh, I need to, you know, get the higher ones, but it's worked for me and you should definitely have, I mean, this kind of it specifically, um, just fantastic to have. This is a must have too. Divine Tool has a 76% chance to cast up to three extra times on the main target. Just really good. Way more damage. Uh, Divine Steed's duration is increased by 90%. Oh my gosh. Take this conduit. Uh, for the first, when I was first starting Protection Paladin, I didn't even know about this or pay attention to it. It really helps out, especially since you don't have, you have low mobility and you're uh you're not rocking cavalier especially when you're getting the higher keys this just helps with mobility getting through long dungeons you know like upper kara uh lower kara iron docks i mean anything it's just so much it's really good um so that's really beneficial i think um avenger shield causes your target to take 5.4 percent increased holy damage from you for four, five seconds really good uh, casting Word of Glory grants you a shield that prevents damage equal to 24% of the healing done by Word of Glory. It lasts 10 seconds. Just a really, really good um, conduit. Um, I think there are some different things that you can change here. Uh, I'm going to show you a resource that I use to help me push um, some higher keys and it's still helping me, which I'll probably always reference to for any class I'm playing ever. But at subcreation.net, I might show you something a little bit later in the video about that. But um, I think people use this as well. It's just a constant heal basically all the time. Um, I don't ever use this. I'm not sure anyone else does. I haven't looked, but, uh, feel free. If you know, like conduits that you think I should be switching around or th something that's better, uh, put it down below. It'd really help me out. I'm sure to help out whoever's watching the video. So throw it in the comments down below for sure. But, uh, if anything, unlock Mechanicos, <laughs> do it, uh, pl uh, please don't do what I did and just go through Pelagos. Uh, I'm still going to unlock this guy to push the Keystone hero, but yeah, super important. Uh, as for legendaries, there's really two legendaries that I would suggest. Um, they're by far the best ones that you could you could get. I'd always keep them for probably every scenario. Obviously, you want your unity. Uh, after casting Divine Toll, you instantly cast Vendor's Shield every five seconds. This effect lasts for 15 seconds. This is really good. I mean, this is so good. It's not even funny. Uh, so much more damage um, overall. Uh, just make sure you get your unity. Uh, but the big one is this one. Avenger's Shield increases the damage of your next Shield of Righteous by 30% for each target hit by Avenger's Shield, stacking up to five times. And it increases its radius by six yards. Um, that helps out with Divine Toll, uh, increases the radius, more damage for Shield of Righteous, which we're basically using and keeping up all the time, helps us keep our damage up. Look at, I mean, you can see how much of that, 24% of my damage on this key um, was Shield of Righteous. Judgment, obviously, uh, that's because of our four set. Um, when you take damage, you have a chance to equal to 100% of your block chance to cast Judgment on your attacker. That's why that's number one for sure. And Avenger Shield. Uh, it's just these are they're really good, but Shield of Righteous. Uh, these are the two ones you're going to be wa uh, rock rocking. I would suggest, obviously, putting this um, Bulwark of the Righteous Fury on your finger. Um, I think for the Unity, you could probably place it anywhere you're missing something. Uh, maybe you would suggest, you know, waist, neck, back, maybe, wrist, wrist. Uh, Probably wouldn't do it in a tier set spot just because it's uh 
I mean, you want it for the tier set, you know, you never know. So, but yeah, ring, ring for your Seal of Righteous Fury. And you can even do double ring, honestly, with Unity and that. Whatever you think is best, but uh, I just wouldn't take up a tier slot unless you need to. Uh, but those are the best legendaries by far. Uh, and I want to show you guys a resource real quick for the final thing. Um, it is uh, subcreation.net. This is super helpful. If you're looking to do rating stuff, um, and then this is where you could go. But subcreation.net, Mythic Plus Season 4. I've talked about some previous videos, but it's just super beneficial. Uh, it shows what the affix is for the, for the week. If you click on your class, we're going to do Protection Paladin. Um, you can see what the top tanks are running, what talents they're running for this stuff, what covenant they're using, what max key they've been able to do. Uh, you can see what legendaries they're using. So obviously the ones I just talked about is Unity and Bulwark of the Righteous Fury. Uh, really good stuff. Soulbind, Mechanicos, obviously is so much better. This is, this is the difference. Look at this, 24. Yeah, so 24 Mechanicos is plus 30. He's just so... Do the work for it if you don't have it unlocked already. Shows you the top conduits here. Um, super, I mean, it just this is so helpful, especially if you're looking into pushing the keys. I, I mean, you get to see all kinds of stuff. You can see what legendaries they're rocking. You can see uh, trinkets, what trinkets, what most popular trinkets are right here. You know, you can see that. Uh, you can even look where to go to get them. Uh, I'd also recommend Wildhead. Um, Wildhead is just a super great resource for things just in general, especially when you're first starting out. Uh, and then Raider Die Up. .io. You can see what the top tank is doing. So you can go to Raider.io, Mythic Plus, Class, Paladin, and you click Tank. You can click on Dwar Dwarf, Dwarf Grow. I don't, this guy is crazy. I've seen him for seasons. I don't actually know him or know who he is really, but he's just a really, he knows what he's doing. I mean, I see him to the top of the, I mean, he's competing with like Blood Death Knights, which is so crazy, but you can see what he's running can see what stats he put into his legendaries what he's using for this what talents he's using for this conduits traits i mean it's just really 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 helpful so i would check out those resources um thank you guys so much for hanging out today uh if you like the video like the video feel free to hit that sub button i've got more videos coming i'm probably gonna make a uh a keystone hero tip guide or something for protection paladin um we'll be making more tanking guides different guides i'm working on getting my frost mage to uh uh, KSM. Once I do that, I'll probably make a video on them. Uh, if you have a class or spec that you want me to test out or try to push to KSM, learn about, and then uh, make a video about, feel free to let me know down in the comments below. Uh, but thank you guys so much. I always appreciate, always appreciate all the support. We're growing tremendously. Goal is to hit 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So we're going to keep pushing for that. Thank you guys. Love you guys. And until next time, peace.